This is our white hive. During our winter checks, we found that this hive had died. We left it outside in the freezing temperatures and closed it off to prevent any robbing on warmer days. But today, we're opening it back up to figure out what happened to the colony. So we already took off the outer cover. We're going to take off the inner cover now. And we'll just check it to see if we find any small hive beetles, ants, or any other piece. And oh, there's a spider. Let's try and get, nope, uh, I missed him. All right, and I don't see anything else. There's a little bit of propolis. Clean off the hive tool a little bit. All right, we'll get that inner cover out of the way. And next we'll just scrape down the beetle blaster, make sure there's no beetles underneath, and have a look. And there's maybe a couple of beetles in there, but it's a few earwigs. Nothing really to be concerned about. They're not going to really do any damage to the hive. But this space right here, it's a 10 frame box. There's only nine frames. Not really sure why we did that, but had we done it on purpose, then all of the frames would have been centered in the hive, or we would have evenly spaced them from side to side in the hive. And the first two frames, we haven't really seen anything except for a, there's a little bee butt sticking out. But not seeing any stores or really anything else yet. We're just going to keep moving through. Okay, here we have a couple of bees there and little bee butts. You see that patch of uh, darker comb right there? That's actually from just a different nectar source. Uh, nothing to be concerned about. It's the same on the other side, a couple of bee butts, some darker comb. Now this frame previously had some mold on it. We removed the wax and replaced the frame for the bees to finish cleaning. Uh, you can see that they started rebuilding, but they didn't quite finish. Okay, fifth frame. Still no stores. Oh, you can see some webbing there. That suggests some wax moss and a couple of bees. Let's flip it over, and really not a whole lot to tell. All right, we'll keep going. Here's some more comb that's not completely finished, but for the most part, it's there. A little bit more webbing. And another bee. And still, no real stores. It's not looking good. All right, we have some darker wax here too. Nothing to be concerned about. There's uh, another little bee butt right there. We'll zoom in. We'll get some more close-ups a little bit later. And there's the last frame. Still no stores in our super. Not looking good. It's looking like possible starvation. All right, we're gonna put these frames back in, seated real quick. And we'll take the tape off. And this is how we closed it up, make sure nothing got in there. And we'll get the super off and have a look into the brood box. And immediately I see a beetle blaster and that is our Formic Pro. That's our Varroa treatment that we did last year. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape this off. We'll get that out of the way. So something we did notice was the uh, the Formic Pro. They say that you can leave it on after the treatment period is over. It did seem to stress out our bees more than really necessary. We're definitely not going to be doing that again. And we have another beetle blaster. We'll take that out. And that definitely has a lot more in it down here. So here's some small hive beetles. There's a couple earwigs again. And you can see a couple dead bees right on top. Okay, let's just get that out of the way for now and we can get into these frames. And the first thing you'll notice is there are 10 frames in this brood box, as there should be. You'll see me struggle a little bit to get these frames out. It's really tight in there. And the first frame, not a whole lot to see. We got one bee and a little bit of webbing it looks like in one of the cells. I'll turn around to the other side and doesn't look much better here. We see a few more bees. And there's a couple little bee butts. That's a, a good indication of starvation there. A couple other bees just kind of hanging on. 
That's about it. Let's get that frame out of the way so we have some room to work. Next frame is still not a lot going on. It's not a good sign. You will notice that the comb in the brood box is darker. That's normal, nothing to be concerned about. However, the cells being empty is definitely a concern. All right, next frame. Okay, we see a little bit of mold in that right side. So more than likely that's where the bees were because the bees do produce moisture. Not really a whole lot on the other side though. Okay, we do have some webbing right up at the top. It's not a lot though. And some more, you got some more mold on this frame. And on the back side. Okay, you can see a queen cup there on the left also, but there's definitely nothing in it. That's, that's an old one. Nothing to be concerned about there, aside from the mold. But again, that's probably from after the, the colony actually died. Just the excess moisture in the hive. All right, next frame we have a little more mold and flip it around and the same thing. I see a bit more webbing, but I'm gonna actually turn the frame at an angle and look down into the tops of the cells towards the top of the frame and I'm just looking for any Varroa frass. That's also known as feces or poop. And that's from Varroa mites. And it'll look white, kind of uh, like crystallized sugar. And it's kind of hard to see in this video, but I don't, I don't really see any in this video right now. But again, we'll look closer up a little bit later. You'll notice some writing on the tops of some of our frames. That's to keep track of what year the comb was drawn out. We do like to cull our wax every three or four years so it's nice and fresh for the bees. That just helps reduce diseases and bacteria within the hive. And it keeps for nice, strong, big bees. And it looks like we've gotten to where the cluster of the bees were here in this group. A lot of bee butts all in a, um, a tight pattern. We'll flip it around, have a look at the other side, and yep, it matches up. So that's probably where the cluster was. Such a sad thing to see. Hate seeing all those little bee butts. They look cute, but it's not something you want to see for sure. You got a little bit more the bee butts there and you can see a, a bee hanging on for dear life and it just didn't work out for her. And again this pattern matches up with the presumed cluster for where the bees were in the hive. And still just a few more bees some more mold, a little bit of webbing from probably wax moth is what it looks like, but it doesn't look like they did a whole lot of damage, honestly. I'm kind of surprised. Maybe we closed it up just in time before those freezing temperatures. We're gonna just set that there for now and get this last frame out, have a look. And this one definitely has some more webbing on this frame than uh, some of the others. But again, not, not, to, ooh, cockroach, gross. Okay. Uh, the top of the frame here, it looks like there were some wax moth cocoons maybe, or they were trying to, to get started. None of them, none of them are alive, thank goodness. Again, it looks like we, uh, we closed it up at the right time. The, the temperatures were nice and cold, so hopefully that got them all. A special thank you to our supporters because of you guys were able to offer more videos with no ads. If you like this video and would like to see more videos without ads, please consider joining as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. If you would like to show your support but would rather a one-time donation instead of a monthly membership, you can buy us a cup of coffee 
If you go to our website at www.rascalapiary.com, just click the buy me a coffee button and you can choose how many cups to buy us. We appreciate every single cup. Time for some close-ups. Let's use our tweezers to pull out one of these bees out of the cell. These tweezers are only used for beekeeping and we'll sterilize them after each use to prevent any spread of disease or bacteria. Oh, you can see some little mites crawling around in the cell. You know, these are not Varroa mites. I believe they are dust mites taking advantage of the, the dead out and the, the fungus, the mold that's growing in the hive. And we'll span up to the bee and you can actually see a couple of them crawling on the body of the bee also. If I turn it around, you can see a few more. And here we're looking down into the tops of the cells. That's going to be the side closest to the top of the frame. And you can see that white Varroa frass. Again, it looks kind of like some sugar crystals. And there's also a couple of mites crawling around there, it looks like. But that's definitely Varroa frass in there. Okay, here you can see that this is the top of the frame here. So the frame's actually upside down, so you can see really well. And even not so close up, you can still see all that white speckles in there. And now we have some wax moth tunneling. You can see where my finger's pointing. And there's three or four little cells there. You can see that's where the wax moth tunnels under the cells. So the bees can't really get to them. It makes them a little more protected from the bees. All right, here we have our bottom board. And this is a screened bottom board. And you can see on the left side right there, we have a concentration of bees. And that's probably where they were clustered. These bees over here on the right side probably died first because they were on the outside edge of the cluster. I'm gonna look for a queen really well. And I actually didn't find one in here. And I know there was one in August looking back at our hive notes. And here you can see it looks kind of like this bee is moving. But if you look close enough, that's actually a wax moth larva moving underneath that bee. Okay, and you can tell it's a wax moth larva because of the distinctive red head. It's a little bit furry as well. Not a whole lot, but if you compare the wax moth larva to a small hive beetle, there are some distinct differences. And this wax moth is just eating all the pollen and other refuse on the bottom board. Now you can even see some of the, the silk webbing, there you go, coming out of the tail end of the the larva. Now this is a different type of larva. This is not one you'll normally see in a hive. Uh, this is a dermistid beetle larva. And dermistids are scavengers. They'll feed on plant and animal material like honeybees and pollen that's dropped on found on the bottom board. And here we've scraped off a bottom board and you can see we've gotten the edges really well and this is what it looks like. And you can see some of the wax moth larvae moving around in there. Oh, there you go. Oh, there it goes. Wiggling around. Yep, that's definitely wax moth larvae there. And we'll feed all of this to the chickens. They love it. And they eat all the larvae and help us make sure that the wax moths and all the other pests that are on that bottom board aren't able to reproduce and get into our other hives. And after looking at all the frames and the bottom board, I believe there are a few factors that cause the downfall of this hive. We know there were a ton of bees, brood, and stores in this hive during our last inspection. And we also saw the queen then, but we didn't find her during the autopsy, so something had to have happened to her. This makes me think that the population was really high going into winter, which means that there were a lot of bees that ate through the stores. 
There was also some added stress from Varroa and from having no queen. To top it off, the cluster seems like it shrank rather quickly because there weren't a lot of bees left in the hive. Uh, we'd love to know what you guys saw, if there was anything else, or if you had a different idea for what happened here. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.